One of the most common kinds of questions I get is about quantum entanglement and possible communication that can go faster than the speed of light. Because when you look at quantum systems, weird stuff happens in general. And with quantum entanglement, weird stuff happens in double extra weird. And some things give the apparent effect of particles being able to communicate faster than the speed of light. And then we're wondering if we can exploit that for our own purposes. So the answer is no, of course not. You can't, uh, you can't transmit information faster than the speed of light. No signals can go faster than the speed of light. Causality can't go faster than the speed of light. But then why does this apparent contradiction in entanglement appears. So so let me explain what's going on and, and why this apparent paradox arises. And this is a paradox actually pointed out by Einstein and a couple collaborators way back in 1935. Turns out Einstein was wrong, but I'll get to that later. Uh, here's, here's a super, super simple scenario, like way more simple than that's actually used in Einstein's original work, uh, way more simple, but it just gets right to the heart of the matter. So I really like the example. Let's say I have two particles. They'll make, we'll make them an electron and we'll have uh, uh, these two particles, quote unquote, entangled, which means they share a quantum state, which means there is a single mathematical description that describes all possible combinations of spins for these electrons. So for example, my quantum state will have four possibilities. They can be both up, they can be both down, or they can be one up and the other down, or the other up and the other down. That, that's it. That's my four possibilities. When I go to measure the spins of these electrons, I get four possible options. Now let's say I simplify things. I simplify things, I set it up just right. So just for simplification, I get rid of the both up and the both down version, so they're out. Now my quantum state has two possibilities, either one up and one down, or one down and one up. I can make a whole bunch of different repeated measurements on this quantum system, and each of these I will get half the time. It's a coin flip. So I prepare my state, get everything all ready quantum wise, put the particles together, entangle them, do the magic spell, ritual, whatever I need to do to get them entangled. And I put each particle in a box and I separate the particles. You know, electrons gone. I'm left with one and I'll give you the other one for, for this example, but I want it back at the end, okay? You, you can borrow it. So this electron, I've got one, you've got one. They're in this quantum state, there have been no measurements, there have been no observations, they're locked in a little box each. And I decide I'm gonna be the first one. Sorry, kind of uh, eager kind of person. So I'm gonna open up my box, I'm gonna make my measurement. What is it gonna be, what is it gonna be? 50-50 uh, chance I'm gonna see down or up, let's say I get an up. Ta-da, my electron's up. What does that mean I know about your particle? That's right, it has to be down because they share a quantum state. They're entangled, they're correlated. I know without ever talking to you, without ever opening up your box, that as soon as you open up your box, you will get a down particle, right? And it was the opposite would be true if the opposite were true. If I saw a down, I knew for sure you would be guaranteed an up. But let's say I don't tell you. Let's say I'm not feeling very talkative that day. I do my side of the experiment, but I don't call you, I don't text you. You are totally ignorant of the results of my experiment. You don't know that I opened it up and got an up. I think I said that right. Instead, you're just, you just decide you, you got the box sitting on the shelf and you're like, oh yeah, yeah, Paul asked me to do this experiment. You, you bring down the box, you open it up, what do you find? You find a down. But ask yourself, you were totally ignorant of my experiment, right? I haven't told you anything, but you open it up and you see a down, but you have to ask yourself, do I see a down because Paul already opened his box and saw an up and forced my particle to be down? Or was I the first person to open up the box and I just randomly got a down? Hey, wait. Now that I think about it, when I opened my box and I saw an up, was that because I was the first person to open up the boxes? 
and I just randomly gotten up and I set what all the particles in the entangled system would be? Or did you sneak on your way back home? You took a little peek in your backpack and you saw a down and it was randomly chosen for you and forced me to be up. How can we know? The only way we can know is if we share information. It means I have to call you on the phone. I have to send out a light signal, send Morse code, whatever, to tell you that I got an up. And then you'll tell me you got it down and we'll compare notes. We'll say, well, yeah, of course, it's an entangled system. These two particles are correlated. If I get an up, you must get it down. If you get it down, I must get an up. So we're all set. But it wasn't until we actually compared notes using normal, boring, slower than light communication methods or speed of light communication methods that we figured out who set the correlation, who was the first to look. So each individual local measurement of an entangled system appears to be totally random. 100% obey the laws of the understanding of quantum mechanics, 50-50 chance up or down. You can't tell the difference. It's only later with classical communication, non-quantum sharing, totally normal, at or below the speed of light that we compare notes and we realize, oh, okay, I went first, I saw an up, that set the entangled system, it selected that state, so you, of course you, you couldn't have a choice to see it down. In other words, there was no communication. There was no communication through entanglement itself. All the communication happened after. And as far as we can tell, as far as we can tell, entanglement occurs instantaneously. And this has very, very profound consequences for what quantum mechanics means. It means that quantum mechanics is not local. Quantum mechanics is not local. This entangled state that I talked about with these two particles, the particles don't care if they're right next to each other. They don't care if they're on opposite sides of my desk. They don't care if they're on opposite sides of the world. They don't care if they're on opposite sides of the universe. Entanglement doesn't care about locality. Objects don't have to be nearby for quantum effects to dominate their behavior. But causality, the effects of one particle on another still hold. The speed of light is still the ultimate speed limit in our universe. No communication was achieved until after we send signals to each other. The entanglement just appeared, even though they're entangled. I know this is crazy. I know this is crazy and hard to wrap your minds around, but bear with me. This is tough stuff. Even though these particles are entangled. They don't communicate with each other. They don't send signals to each other. There's no hidden information that we're just too ignorant to see or understand. The particles are entangled. Locality doesn't matter. They can be as far apart as they want. The act, for lack of a better word, of entanglement occurs instantaneously. But the revelation of entanglement happens no faster than the speed of light. That's the distinction between locality and causality. Quantum mechanics breaks locality, but it does not violate causality. So there you go. Don't bother trying to use entangled particles to send messages faster than the speed of light. It's not going to work. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Please don't forget to subscribe. Uh, hit the like button on the video. Make sure you're getting notifications when I go live. And of course, go to patreon.com slash PM Sutter, which is how I support and fund all of my education and outreach activities, entangled or not. And I'll see you next time.